Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whatever time it happens to be for you. For me, it's the morning of May 21st, 2021. camera is picking up a lot of that bird noise, bird song. And not too much of the wind. I'm out here on Johnson Lake again. I know, I have a lot of lakes to choose from up here and I keep coming back to the same lake. But Today's video isn't about the lake I'm paddling, or even really paddling itself. It's about Sam. Sam took his final portage two days ago on May 19th. He went downhill very, very quickly after he was diagnosed with cancer. Last couple of days he wasn't eating anything. He was drinking. He was getting weaker and weaker, of course. I mean, not eating anything, you're gonna get weaker. He was still enjoying his walks, but they were getting slower and shorter and uh, then his tail such as it was quit whacking and uh, it became painfully obvious that it was his time so I took him into the vet Wednesday morning he passed away very peacefully with assistance in my arms. I thought when he was diagnosed that I'd have a at least one more chance to bring him up here with me and at least give him one more paddle. Maybe even do a short easy boundary waters trip with him. But that was not to be. So last October's trip, his 28th, was his last time in the Boundary Waters. And his last time in the canoe was a day after I filmed the last update. I don't know if it was a day after or a day or two afterward anyway. That, uh, that three friends and I came out here paddling and I brought him with didn't bring any cameras at all I was just out here paddling Sam's story actually starts with Frodo and no, I'm not talking about Tolkien's Frodo, although, in a way, in a way it was. But our previous dog was named Frodo. We uh, adopted Frodo in the late 90s. He'd already gone through a few owners, I'm not sure how many, more than one, and uh, it was one of those owners that had named him Frodo. At the time, my wife had no, absolutely no interest in Tolkien, Hobbits, any of the books. 
but we decided since he was already called Frodo we would continue using that name of course Frodo was supposed to be my wife's and my kid's dog and not mine but a lot of us know how that works <laughs> So technically he was my wife's dog, especially once the kids left home. But of course uh, I ended up doing a lot with him. Anyway, when I uh, took up paddling big time, you know, about the time we got him was when I really started getting into paddling. I mean, I, I've been paddling most of my life. But uh, other things kind of took center stage for a number of years. But I st that's when I started going to uh, Chester Woods more. My wife convinced me that I ought to take Frodo along. Kind of fought the idea to start with, but after a while, yep, I started taking him along. And Frodo would stand, stand. In the front of the canoe, very front of the canoe, he perches his elbows up on the gunnel and he'd just stand there and look around. Wind would blow his ears. Just like with Sam, I took him to Chester Woods quite frequently. And uh, whenever we'd come across a boat out there that had any women on it, you know, didn't matter what age, I'd get, oh, cute, oh, how cute, <laughs> oh, how cute. Didn't take me long to figure out they weren't talking about me. <laughs> so anyway, he quickly, quickly earned the nickname, the Chick Magnet. So he would go out to Chester Woods, quite frankly, with me, and I always... <laughs> always enjoyed the attention. <laughs> well, I enjoyed having him in the canoe, and he took to it very well. He wasn't a swimmer, but he really enjoyed being perched in front of, at the front of the canoe and uh, watching the world go by. 2003, my wife was in England in the spring and I wanted to go on a canoe trip. So I had two choices. I either could put him in uh, put him in a kennels for a week, which would have been expensive, or I could take him with me. I'd kind of resisted the idea of taking him on a canoe trip or any dog on a canoe trip for that matter up until that time but I decided yeah I would take him so that was the trip where I put in on uh, Bower Trout Lake with the full intention of completing the loop that I did this past August again as I said in the introduction of that film I'm not quite sure why I didn't complete the loop. I don't remember now. But uh, what I did find on that trip was I really, really enjoyed having a, having a dog along. Well, unfortunately, from then on out, as long as my wife was home when I went on a trip, I couldn't take Frodo. I had to go by myself. But there were three other occasions when I went on a trip while she was in England and I was able to take him and I really enjoyed those trips. So Frodo got to take four trips in his lifetime. He enjoyed them too. The only problem with Frodo was that he liked to chase squirrels and he liked
to bark at them. He would bark his head off at them, which, you know, having a barking dog in the middle of the Bounty Waters is not ideal. So, in a way, yes, I liked having him along, but on the other hand, I didn't like having him along because of the barking. Everything else was just fine. He took to a tent right away. He took to camping. He was just, uh, he was a great partner. Well, then, he got cancer. In his case, we actually managed to uh, go for about two years after we found out he had cancer. But uh, it was one morning, June 7th, the day after D-Day after of uh, 2008. Well, actually, the night before, he'd had a lot of trouble breathing. A lot of trouble breathing. And in the morning, he was really gasping for air. So, we let him out first thing in the morning, do his thing. And uh, he went and hid under the car. Had a hard time getting him out of the car. So we took him to the VAP. We found out that he had a tumor in his throat that was basically choking him. It was blocking off his airway and it was choking him to death. So that was Frodo's time. To start with, I wasn't sure I wanted another dog. Apart from all the work involved with having a dog, and I knew it was going to fall mostly to me, there was also a heartbreak when we lost Frodo. And did I really want to go through that again? But on the other hand, I did really miss having a paddling partner and so my wife convinced me that uh, eventually that we needed to get another dog now I th don't think I mentioned that Frodo had a lot of schnoodle in him a lot of schnauzer poodle with a few other things thrown in. But they, but he uh, got us to really liking Schnoodles. Just the way he acted, the way he was. We became convinced that Schnoodles were the way to go. So we started looking around for a Schnoodle to adopt. At the same time, we kind of figured we should get two dogs. Not just one dog, but two dogs. So that I had one that I could take on trips with me. And my wife would have one that would stay at home with her when I went off paddling. And then of course, they would have each other for companionship when I wasn't off on a trip. So, did some searching around for schnoodles and we found a place out in Wyndham, Minnesota, way out in the west, southwest part of the state, about a three hour drive from Rochester, from our house. And uh, so they showed us schnoodle. They also had well, actually, they specialized in, in doing all kinds of uh, poodle crosses. So they also had Shih Tzu poodle crosses, or Shipu, as they're commonly called, or Shia Poo. 
So they had at the time that we contacted them, they had one one schnoodle still available, and they had a bunch of these sheep boos. I think they had some other crosses available at the same time. I don't really remember for sure. So we went, made the three-hour drive out there, and uh, yeah, they had this. Uh, gangly looking schnoodle of course they didn't name the dogs they, they felt that it was up to the owner now this place was just a very little cut above the puppy mills that you read about uh, the puppies were in comfortable kennels. Um, you went into the kennels, there were different partitions. They kept all the uh, all the litter separate within this uh, within this kennels. So Sam, I don't know how many siblings he had, but he was the last of his litter. He was actually about six months old at the time. He was born on January 25th, and this was, I think, July 5th that we went. So, he was all alone in this one partition. They did let the dogs out to play once in a while. They had a kid. They would let the dogs play with the kid. The kid would play with the dogs. So, like I said, it wasn't quite your puppy mill situation, but it wasn't much better. And there was another kennels off to the side that was just full of adult dogs. I mean, just crowded in. Obviously, that's where the dogs that uh, they couldn't uh, they couldn't find owners for. That's where the dogs would end up. Now they did have one or two pet dogs too, but uh, house dogs, I guess you'd call them. But there, there was this whole kennel full of uh, basically unadoptable dogs. And I'm sure Sam was uh, fairly close to being, or I should say this stool that they had, was real close to suffering that same fate. Anyway, they, they let this noodle out, and the first thing he did <laughs> was he uh, started taking the, the puppy stance of, you know, when they want to play, they get down on their elbows, <laughs> and he actually ran out of the uh, kennels out, outside, I mean intentionally, uh, on his elbows. My wife thought that was really strange, and... and she didn't really like him to start with. <laughs> she really did. I mean, he was gangly. His his legs were twice as big as they should have been. They were. He was definitely bigger than what uh, Frodo had been. Frodo was 15 pounds or so, around about that neighborhood. Sam was already probably 20 pounds at the time. I got down on the ground with him. I played with him a little bit. He kind of took to me. I don't know if it was really love at first sight, but I definitely liked him. At the same time, we uh, had him, had the owner get out some of these sheep boots that he had. I think he had three of them at the time. All males, all black. So we kind of got them out. Had Sam... Well, the stool out at the same time. Well, out of those three, one of them just kind of laid around and slapped. Another one was tormenting Sam, pulling his ears. Uh, there was another one that was kind of in between. He was kind of playing with Sam, but he wasn't being over and rambunctious about it. 
So we decided to take him. So we, we decided to take the Snoodle and we t decided to take the Shipu. What I forgot to mention is that uh, this enclosure that Sam was in, he had a nice, I mean it was a big enclosure. It was definitely roomy. And it had straw on the floor. Uh, he didn't have a water bowl, he didn't have a food bowl, he didn't have any toys. He had nothing. And we kind of mentioned to the owner, you know, why why isn't there at least a water bowl in there? And it's, he said, well, basically every time they put a water bowl in, Sam would flip it over and, uh, or just, yeah, I keep calling him, let, let me call him Sam, even though he wasn't named at the time. He would keep flipping the bowl over, so therefore they, they quit putting the bowl in there. They would put one down for him for a little while, let him drink, and then they'd take it out. Well, of course, the reason he kept flipping the bowl over was because that was the only toy he had to play with. In a way, even though we paid good money for, for Sam, and, uh, you know, like I said, it was a cut above a... Uh, a puppet mill, the situation that he was brought up in, we still felt that, always felt that uh, Sam was kind of a, a rescue dog. Because not only, you know, was he in this one kennel all by himself, but if nobody came and claimed him, he'd end up in that uh, very crowded kennel with all the adult dogs. And seeing as he was coming up on six months, I don't think it, he had very long before uh, he'd end up there. So, of course, by the time 2008 rolled around, at least one of the uh, Lord of the Rings uh, videos had come out movies. I can't remember whether they had all come out by then or not, but anyway, Pat was suddenly a Tolkien Hobbit fan, big time. So, even before we uh, went out, you know, as soon as Frodo passed, she was saying we needed to get two dogs, first of all, and that one of them had to be named Sam, Samwise. So, yeah, when we picked up this uh, schnoodle and this shipu, then, uh, the schnoodle became Samwise, Sam for short, of course. The Shipu became Pip, Peregrine. Uh, a few months later, <laughs> for reasons that I'm not going to talk about now, because they're not really part of Sam's story, we ended up getting a female Shipu, and she ended up being named Rosie, which of course isn't short for anything. But Rosie was one of the character, one of the female characters, of course, in uh, Lord of the yeah of in the trilogy. Uh, actually, what ended up being Sam's wife. <laughs> But anyway, that's a whole different thing. But the thing that was amazing about that is, uh, of course, we named them before we really knew what their personalities were going to be. But they grew up so much matching their namesakes. Sam, the faithful one. Of course, he wasn't faithful to Frodo, I mean, my, my Sam wasn't faithful to Frodo because Frodo wasn't anymore. 
but he sure was faithful to me. Quiet, reserved, perfect companion. Stuck with me through thick and thin. Oh. Just, uh, yeah, just perfect companion. And Sam, uh, Sam became my dog instantly. Within a day or two of us taking him home, she was sitting on my lap in the recliner, looking at, up at me with those brown eyes of his. And you know, you see the cartoons where the hearts are coming out of the eyes. Hearts were coming out of his eyes, as they often did. And I turned to Pat and I said, I think we've bonded. She said, you certainly have. Over the years, he'd sit on other people's laps occasionally too. And he was always loving. But he'd always come back to mine. He always come back to mine. He knew who his number one was. So over that first summer, we had him. I got him used to the canoe. I, uh, first of all, just put the canoe down in the grass. And, uh, just got him into the canoe. Got him used to uh, being in there. Taught him to how to jump in and out of the canoe. And, uh, then I eventually got him uh, out on Chester Woods Lake a few times. Took him around the lake paddle. Now, unlike Frodo, who uh, sat up in the bow of the canoe, Sam always liked to sit right in front of me. Right in front of me. He didn't want to leave me. <laughs> he didn't want to get that far away from me. So I took him on several outings, but didn't think he was quite ready to take on the Bounty Waters yet. So in the spring of uh, the next year, spring of 2009, May or June, something like that, I brought him up to the uh, North Shore for a camping trip. Got him used to the tent and sleeping in the tent and all that kind of good that stuff. And then uh, later that year, he and I, uh, I brought him up to go on a Bounty Waters trip. And that trip we went in on uh, Baker Lake. And uh, we spent the night before camping at the Baker Lake campground. And then uh, went in to do a trip. Well, we got up to the uh, portage from Kelly Lake to... I can't, no, I can't remember the name of the lake we were heading to. I should know it. Senior moment. Anyway, we were on the portage out of Kelly Lake. And a forest, <coughs> a forest ranger caught up with us. And uh, informed me that my wife was in the hospital with a uh, bowel blockage. Well, he, he didn't know why, but she was in the hospital. Uh, he and his partner were going to help me uh, exit so I could get back to Rochester. So, <laughs> unfortunately, his first uh, trip was cut short. But later on, 
that summer, I think in July, I managed to uh, head out once again with him. And uh, we went in on the Little Indian Sioux River north. And uh, I think we made it up to South Lake, I think it was. So that was his first, first ever uh, Boundary Waters trip. And uh, right from the get-go, he handled it a lot better than I did. I it kind of ironic. Maybe the ironic isn't quite the right word. Fitting, I guess. That Sam's next to last trip and actually basically his last real trip because the October trip was so laid back. No portaging or anything. So it's kind of fitting in a way that his uh, last number 27 of 28 anyway. We entered at Bower Trout Lake. And we did we completed the trip that I had set out to do with uh, Frodo. Uh, all those years before. You see, 2003, 18 years before, was when I had set out to do that trip with Frodo. So Pat's already talking about getting another dog. I'm not so sure I'm ready for that. Of course, we still have Pip and Rosie. Neither one of them are Bounty Waters dogs. I wouldn't even attempt to take them. There are people that take dogs to the Bounty Waters that, uh, you know, the dogs definitely should not be up there for one way or another. And, uh, no, Pip and Rosie are not Bounty Waters dogs. Going forward, I might uh, start bringing Pip out paddling. He'll be okay in the canoe. You know, situations like this, or even back in Rochester, Chester Woods. But, uh, so this year, at least, if and when I do a Bounty Waters trip, and who knows, maybe I won't even get one this year. But if and when I do, I'll probably do it dogless. Even if we have a new pup at the time, I would be taking him along until I had a chance to uh, introduce him to ca canoeing, him or her, to canoeing and camping and all the rest of it. This could very well be the first year since 1999, I'm thinking, or maybe even 2000, the first trip that I don't actually go on a Boundary Waters trip. Rather ironic when you think about it. Uh, here I am moving to the doorstep, the gateway, and I may not actually get a trip. But of course, lots of paddling time, lots of paddling time, lots of exploring lakes. And of course, by a trip, I mean an overnight trip. I'll have plenty of opportunities to do day trips, I'm sure. I have nothing planned at the moment. I've got some ideas for, especially for a two-week August trip. Whether it'll happen or not, I don't know. And I got people that want to do a trip with me, so who knows, maybe something will happen. For now, I just have to get over Sam. I'm going to be missing him like crazy. And 
and uh, gotta get over him gotta get Pat's uh, hip replacement behind us see what what she feels like after that and uh, yeah and gotta get the house moving taken care of too so just a, a lot of things going on that uh, yeah just not sure it's gonna happen this year but I guarantee you I'll be doing a lot of day exploring so yeah my, my channel won't be going in going dormant by any means it just might uh, be a little bit of a change up so anyway now you have the rest of uh, Sam's story the story of Samwise Gamgee Ricker aka Sam the Faithful born January 25th 2008 final portage May 19th 2021 rest in peace little buddy rest in peace I'm gonna miss you like crazy thanks for watching